Good day and welcome to Art, Life, and Faith. Today we've got a very special interview with a friend of mine, Karen Schmidt, who is a wonderful sculptor. I've had the privilege of watching Karen the past uh, several years uh, as a sculptor and have seen uh, many examples of her work. And she is a wonderful woman. She's a mom. She's a grandma. Um, but you're going to be um, fascinated by what I see in her life as this integration of her heart for God, her deep prayer life, uh, the quality and craftsmanship and excellence she brings to her work as a sculptor. And it's just my real privilege to have Karen with us today on Art, Life, and Faith. So Karen, how are you doing out there? Good. Great. Hi, Joey. Well, everybody else. thank you so much for taking the time to uh, uh, talk to me today and for all the artists that are going to watch this interview. Tell us, how did you get started as a sculptor? What were your early influences and what were those early years like as, as a sculptor? I, I find your work just fascinating. So um, tell us more about how you got started in this. Thank you. Well, I um, got my degree in art uh, in the early 70s and um, got a teaching credential uh, and then ended up getting married and had kids. And that was the focus of my life um, for a long time, involvement in church and things like that. And uh, when my youngest was in junior high, I began to long to do more than just crafts and things like that. So I um, went to an art store to buy some supplies and found a brochure from a Russian artist named Simon Kogan, who was offering private lessons. And so I studied with him. This was 1996. And... Um, started studying with him and he taught me everything I know about sculpture, introduced me to the, um, the artists, uh, early modern sculptors that I dearly love and have greatly influenced my life, uh, as long as, as well as Simon's own work has influenced me. So um, the early years I would get a commission and then work on that and it was, uh, it's been slow. I was still juggling a lot of things in my life um, but the last few years have been more um, full-time. I now have a studio that's large enough to do large pieces, and um, it's uh, taking a lot of time and effort, and it's a great adventure. That, that's wonderful. You know, in the early years of the Grove Center for the Arts and Media, I specifically remember <laughs> one time when we had a, a gathering of uh, women. Some of them were artists, some of them were not but you went through a very detailed process of showing them how you create your sculptures. And so um, the question I'd have for you is, through the body of work that you've developed over your career as an artist, what are you trying to communicate? What, what story are you essentially looking to tell? Well, um, all of my work is um, uh, based on universal themes. Uh, and paradoxes like um, suffering and redemption, um, joy and sorrow, struggle, uh, um, all those kinds of themes that are very universal. And I, um, my work is representational. I sculpt figures and uh, that tell a story, but I like to leave enough space in um, in the work that the person that views it needs to take the time to contemplate and they bring their own life and story and connect with the sculpture and so um, that's where God often speaks and so I have um, well an example would be my sculpture bound which I just happen to have here Great. <laughs> and, um, and it started with me in a place of deep frustration over the things that bind me and uh, um, I sculpted this with all my heart and afterwards said oh she's praying and now she's wrapped in grace and um, and acceptance and healing and so I had a woman at the Loveland Sculpture Invitational come along and say she looked at that and and said that's the story of my life I've been on that journey. And so um, often things will come out when someone views my sculpture that I may not have intended in the first place. 
but uh, true art speaks on so many levels that it communicates on those levels. Now tell me, with, within that, in looking to communicate these different themes in your work, for yourself personally, what's the connection between your relationship with God and your artwork? How does that play out? Yeah, I um, feel like it's deeply connected because I don't really see my work as the secular and then the religious work. I think the whole, all of it is religious. Absolutely. And it, yes, and it flows from that a deep centering in Christ in my relationship with God. And so I really nurture my spiritual life. It's the central place. Um, that, that my work comes. So I bookend my day with um, morning and evening prayers, which involves um, scripture reading, and and prayer is a central part. There's a, a real spiritual struggle as I work and uh, work out themes. The work sometimes speaks to me, um, but it, it flows from from that place. Well, and since I've known you for a number of years now, and those artists or creative people listening to this don't have the advantage that I do, since I've, I've been, had the privilege of being with you in a number of different settings, I've really seen that um, when I look at your life and your deep devotion to prayer and scriptures and the, the larger body of Christ, and then when I see your artwork, there there's a definite connection. And when I think about artists living in integrated life, I, th I think, even though you probably won't say this for yourself, but I could say it for you, is is that um, how you bring that balance in integration and symmetry, that, that that's really a model for every artist who is who wants to pursue a deeper relationship with God, as well as excel at their craft. So I, I've just, I, I've seen that so much in your work. Mm -hmm. And for when you visit Karen's website, you're going to see the, the the depth and dimension of her work by the uh, sculpture she's created. Um, well, moving on here, then give us a picture. What does a day in your studio look like? Um, how do you prepare yourself for that day? Mm -hmm. I um, I start my day with prayer. I walk in the park, which provides solitude and uh, time for reflection, either at the beginning of the day or at the end. Um, and I come in and uh, go to my logbook, enter the time I, I came into the studio, and then I have a, a prayer that I, I pray for my work and, and for the day. And then I go in and start sculpting. And I take breaks to be able to stretch and to do the contact work, uh, you know, calling people and um, business end of it and get back to work and so it's kind of a rhythm throughout the day uh, back and forth so I typically sculpt maybe four to six hours uh, a day and I'm in the studio about seven to eight hours yeah that's wonderful so. that's that's a great picture um, now tell us about what has what is your perspective and I know this is a huge loaded question and we could spend a lot of time on this but what's your perspective on the role of art in the church and how do you view the current state of art in the church? It's such an important issue. So if you could speak to that for a couple of minutes. Sure, sure. Um, well, a lot of the art that I do is for the liturgical church, um, which would be Catholic or Orthodox. Or, um, I haven't done any for them, but Anglican. Um, and, and so visual images, representational art, and symbols have, um, have been part of their... Uh, context there they value it highly and it enhances worship and leads to contemplation so for that part of the church um, uh, visual imagery and art is is very important the risk for them is that it becomes so familiar that they forget to really see it or that the stress of finances uh, leads them to buy something from a catalog or inferior art rather than really being able to invest in um, in the finest art uh, that will speak for generations. But for the uh, um, Protestant, uh, evangelical, charismatic churches, uh, historically, imagery with 
people and especially three dimensional have not has not been a part of the of their culture and has been um, resisted. And so I'm encouraged to see that in the last um, decade or so that there's a, a renewed interest in um, in imagery through videos and and art and uh, even art exhibits, uh, people painting during the service, things like that. That um, that. I think there's a recognition that um, that art has a, a chance to communicate to us in a different way. I think that uh, that the danger for these churches are that um, the message that we're trying to get across may eclipse the depth of the art, and and that there's um, maybe not seeing art as uh, an avenue for contemplation leading to worship, that it becomes more utilitarian or illustrative. So um, I, I'm encouraged, especially by the organizations like SIVA, um, Growth um, uh, Center for the Arts, the um, Arts Entertainment Ministries, uh, Biola Art Symposium, these opportunities that bring artists together and uh, help us to learn, uh, to, to have the support, and also continue the dialogue with the churches. I, I think it's an important dialogue to have. Absolutely. That's great. Now, what would you say to someone who's struggling as an artist? Uh, they could be wrestling with their relationship with God. They could be going through difficult financial times, uh, personal relationships. Um, what would you say to that person who is just really struggling with that overall calling as an artist and am I in the right place? Should I be doing this? You know, that that's that's my real heartbeat is is to, to really support people that are wrestling with with difficult issues like that. Yes. I, I think um, that it, it is a, a challenging thing. Being an artist uh, is always always involves struggle. Because we, we can envision something and we may not be able to execute it. It, it involves struggle on all kinds of levels. Um, being able to carve out the time that's necessary to do the work. But I think um, being encouraged that it's normal to struggle. Uh, I would say that uh, as Christians, we have a responsibility to do things with excellence and uh, we can't um, compromise. And so continue to take classes, workshops, study, read, and, and grow in your craft. Uh, do the best work that you can possibly do. Um, I think sometimes it uh, may require help uh, from uh, counselors, pastors. Uh, I use a business coach. And um, so there have been multiple levels that I've struggled on. One is that saying yes to art and to an art career means saying uh, probably, I was going to say a hundred no's, it must be a thousand no's <laughs> to other things. To other things. Uh, it requires such dedication and sacrifice. And so um, also I, this is where I think it's important that we don't just see who we are as an artist as separate from who we are as a whole person, that we are truly integrated beings. And so um, how we are as a child of God and uh, responding to the Holy Spirit, growing uh, in our in maturity, in all should be in all areas of our lives, and it should be integrated so that it's reflected in our relationships, it's reflected in our work, it's reflected in the way we order our day and we can so um, get help if you need it and certainly can't figure this out on our own. I think God calls us to be in community and so call on other, um, other artists, call on professionals and um, join in the dialogue. That, that's a great word. Karen, uh, we need to wrap things up now but I really want people to be able to get a hold of you. How, how can people get in contact with you? Uh, my website is Karen Schmidt Sculpture, and um, I have a contact page on there, and just email me. It comes directly into my um, email mailbox, and uh, um, I'll answer it. I would love to hear from uh, 
anybody and continue this this dialogue that's great that's a wonderful in invitation so if you're listening to this i really want to encourage you to go to karen schmidt sculpture.com you can contact karen directly you can see wonderful uh, pictures of her work you can sign up for her blog i receive her updates they're they're wonderful thoughtful uh, uh, messages on the integration of her faith and her work uh, it's a wonderful website worth exploring and sharing with your friends uh, karen thank you so much for being with us today i know you're going to encourage a lot of people with your words a final announcement for art life and faith we've just recently started something called the question of the week where i am sending out questions to you as artists uh, talking about what are different issues related to our art our life our faith i'd love for you to answer the question of the of the week and share it with a friend when you get it and thank you so much for being with us today and we look forward to being with you again soon thanks so much